Welcome to Dr. Piercy's Writing Game Servlet for our Servlet Guessing Game example. In this video, we'll review the Guessing Game example Servlet version and how the Game Servlet component fits in. You'll learn how to write a Java Servlet for a dynamic web application using Eclipse. Here's the guessing game. Craig the Game Master comes up with a secret number. Nick the player of games gives several guesses until he gets the right one. Along the way, Craig will answer telling him whether to guess higher or lower until there's a correct guess and Craig will respond that the guess is correct and the number of guesses that it took. One of our components will be the game number class. We'll use this to represent all of the different numbers the minimum value and the maximum value of the range between which the player should guess, the target value, which will be a random number the player is attempting to guess. Each time there's a guess, it will be represented as a game number. And then finally, the number of guesses that the player is taking will also be represented as a game number. So this will be part of the model of our application. We can also see here that we'll be making two other components. We've already created an index.jsp, which will initialize all the game numbers needed in the games, and then provide a form to allow the player to make the first guess. The rest of the game will be controlled, and the view will be displayed using a game servlet component. It will compare the guess, determine whether it's high or too low, and give the appropriate response. And if it's not correct, provide a form for a next guess, and then finally, let the player know if they got it right and how many guesses that it took. Here's a view of the request response cycles for our game. Once the player enters the guess on the index.jsp view, they will click a button to submit a request. The data from the form, the actual guess that the player is submitting, 500 in this case, and the hidden values of the initialized numbers, guesses, target, minimum, and maximum, will be sent along with the request to the server. When the web server receives this request along with the data, it will immediately create two objects. The request object, which holds any data coming from the client side, and the response object, which will put any data that's necessary to be sent back to the client from the server. Our game servlet will be responsible for reading the input data and then creating the view. So it's going to be using both the request and the response to get the input, process it, and create the output. Along the way, it will utilize the game number class as needed. When the game servlet is finished processing, it will then create the response and send that back to the client. Just before doing so, it will delete the request and response objects. Client will receive the results. Player will make their next guess click on the button, send a new request along with all the data. Web server will receive that, create two new objects for request and response. None of the information from the previous request response are stored on these objects. They're brand new. The game servlet will receive the data, process it along with help from the game number class to create a response. Once the response is created, the request and response objects will be deleted and the response will be sent back to the guest servlet. So these are the activities that we need to account for when we create our game servlet class. One more thing to think about, how will our views look? Here are the simple wireframes. The initial view will have a welcome message, some instructions, and an input form for the first guest. This is already created on index.jsp. Notice it's very similar to the view when the guess is incorrect. We have a, a message, some instructions along with whether or not to do higher or lower, and then the similar input form. Finally, once we get the correct guess, we'll say congrats, and we'll have a link that says play again. Here we see our current version of our guessing game servlet version. We have already set up the project. We imported and tweaked index.jsp from a previous example, and we've also imported our game number class into the model package, also from a previous example. The only component we have left to create is the game servlet, and we're going to include that in our controllers package. To start creating that, locate controllers package in the project explorer and right-click. We'll select new, 
and this time we're looking for Servlint. If you don't see it on your list, remember to go to Other and then search for it in the Web folder. And here we do see a set of dialogues that will help us in creating the Servlint. Note that the project is already set to what we need it to be set to, as is the source folder and even the Java package. These are already set by virtue of us have, having right-clicked on the controller's package. We need to create the class name. This will be Game Servlet. Note that it inherits from a superclass. So a Game Servlet is actually an HTTP Servlet. Click Next. Here we can enter some more information. So we have the name of our Servlet, which we're calling Game Servlet. We can write a description. So I've included a short one here. If I needed to initialize any parameters, I could add those and they would be initialized as soon as the web server creates an instance of this servlet. You can think of a URL mapping as what would be needed to make a hyperlink to run this servlet. It automatically generated the game servlet as the URL mapping, but I prefer to use something a little bit more approachable. Let's edit this and we're just going to change it to slash guess. Notice you need to keep the slash in the pattern. The reason I chose guess, it's a nice friendly thing for what the person is actually... It's a nice friendly term that has a meaning that is logical related to what is happening in the game. In addition, when we imported our index.jsp file, we adjusted the action to guess. We'll look at that again in a moment. Let's click next. On this last page, we see some uh, modifiers that we can adjust for our servlet. We're going to leave it the default as public. I do not need to implement any interfaces, so I'll leave that blank. And then we can choose some methods. I'm going to take the defaults that are here, but notice a couple of these. Do post and do get. We'll look at those and talk about them a little bit more when we see the servlet code, and you'll see that the stubs are already generated. But for now, think about, have you seen the words get or post in any context yet? And so what might happen when a get request is sent or a post request is sent to this servlet? There is nothing else yet to be set, so let's click Finish. Notice a couple things. In the Project Explorer, under Controllers Package, we now have the game servlet.java class. A servlet is a Java class, that's why it goes in Java Resources. It's a special one that extends the HTTP servlet class from the JCL. Notice something else, game servlet.java has been opened in the editor for us to edit. Let's take a quick glance at index.jsp. Notice the action of our form we have set to guess. This is exactly what we set as the URL mapping for our servlet. So what we're saying here in the form is when this form is submitted, go back to the server and run whatever is connected to the action guess. We'll see that connection momentarily again in the game servlet. Let's select game servlet. Let's go ahead and expand that now so we can begin to edit it. But before we do, let's look at what has already been generated. You'll notice there are a number of imports. Be sure to leave these as is, except you can minimize their view so the editor is less cluttered. Notice this at web servlet annotation. Anything in Java that starts with at is part of a scheme by Java called annotations. And generally they're special commands for helping to set up whatever component you've created. In this case, the at web servlet is the primary way that the server knows some things about this servlet. For example, recall in the dialog boxes that we typed in a description. That is located here. In addition, we set one URL pattern. That is also located here. So this is going to be very important, this line. When the web server creates the application and starts it, it will look through the servlet components for this information. The URL pattern especially is important because that's how it's going to know when to run the servlet. Whenever a request is submitted to our web server with the pattern slash guess, this, the game servlet is going to start running. Notice that there's a basic constructor. I'll minimize that to get it out of the way. Notice also that there are two other methods with just the stub, the doGet method and the doPost method. 
Other than the name, they are both protected, void, and have the same parameter list. Notice the parameter list, a request object and a response object. So the server has created these objects, and as the server creates this instance, it's going to determine to run either the doGet or the doPost method, and as it calls those to run, it will pass it as parameters our request and response objects. So that means that they are kind of automatically available to our servlet code because they've been declared as parameters. Both of these methods also throw a couple exceptions which are generally caught by the server and the server will determine how to handle those exceptions. The basic difference between these two methods so far is just the name, do get or do post. Let's take one more look back at index.jsp for a moment. Recall that in the HTML form tag, one of the attributes is the method attribute. In our case, it's currently set to post. So the code that's going to run when a request is sent from this particular form to the server and then the servlet is the doPost method. So if a method is set to post, that means when the servlet is called, the doPost method will run. If I wanted to run get, I would change it to get. It turns out that as the designer of a servlet, you need to have at least one of these methods, do get or do post. It's allowed to have both, but you need to decide if you're going to implement them or not. Since we're using post, let's write our code inside the doPost method. To start writing our doPost method, let's think first what we need to do. Get the input values from the request. Convert or set up the input for processing, determine the outcome of the guess, adjust any values as needed, for instance if we need to increment the number of guesses, and then send output to the response. First, let's get the guess. Game number, I'll call that guess, equal new game number. So the value I want to set up this game number is actually from the request parameter, specifically the request parameter for the guess. Still a problem though, this request parameter is actually a string as all parameters are, so if I want to store it as an int, I'm going to need to convert it to an int, and I choose to use integer parse int. Almost there with this line, except for the game number itself cannot be resolved to a type. A nice feature of Eclipse is if you see an error like this, of course after you read the error and figure out what is causing the problem, sometimes there are quick fixes available. You can generally look at the quick fixes and one of them might be the thing you need to do to fix the problem. Of course, only pick the one that you know to be the fix, not just because it's on top. In this case, I do need to import game number from the model. So I'm going to click on the quick fix and we could look at the top at the imports and we see that the model has been added. To reiterate, we've requested the parameter, which is a string. We then converted that string into an int and then we set up a game number object for that. We have four other numbers to do that with, so let's get cracking. Mostly I'm going to follow the same pattern. All of them are ints. And then finally, our number of guesses. So of the five things I need to do, I've completed the first two. 
I received all of the input values and I immediately created some game numbers out of them. Now I need to determine the outcome of the guess. In so doing, I will probably be adjusting any values as needed based on the particular outcomes. Recall a guess is correct if it matches the target. So simply an if guess.getValue equals target dot get value if that is true guess is correct else if that's false the guess is incorrect if it is incorrect I also need to check whether it is higher or lower so I can do if guess.getValue is less than target.getValue in which case guess is low they need to guess higher else guess is high they need to guess lower regardless of what the outcome of the guess is going to be we do need a message that we can reply with so let's create a string that will hold that message. So if the guess is correct, our message could be something like, congratulations, you got it in. Guesses holds the number of guesses, so if it was five, they would say five tries. That's primarily all we need to do if the guess is correct. Otherwise, If the guess is low, we need to say incorrect, please guess higher. Or if the guess is high, we need to say incorrect, please guess lower. So our message looks good. Now if we look, we've completed most of the task that we set out for ourselves. We got the input values from the request and we converted each of them to a game number. We used the values to process and determine the message. One thing we haven't done yet is if the guess is incorrect, we need to implement the number of guesses. At this point, we're finished with processing because we've created the appropriate message. Now we need to do what I consider the hard part of using a servlet to generate a view. Before we can do so, let's think about where this data is going. If I want to print data from this class, it does not go to a console, it goes to the response object. So I need to set up something that will let me write to the response object. To start that, let's type response dot set content type. And we're going to tell it to accept text slash HTML. Next, we're going to use another method of the response to create what is called a print writer. Type print writer. Let's call it out. And we're going to set that equal to response dot get writer. Notice a little slight error still. We need to actually import the print writer. So what have we done here? We've created an output object we're calling out that we can actually print to. What do we need to print to the response? We need to print all of the content and HTML appropriate for the various outcomes of the guess. I'm going to cheat a little bit because I'm going to go here and instead of typing everything in I'm going to grab all of the HTML from index. We'll paste that in. You'll notice a bunch of errors. It's because I'm in the middle of Java and I just put in a bunch of HTML. Turns out all of this HTML needs to be wrapped in a method of our out object in order to print it to the response. Start with the first one and you'll get the pattern. Out dot let's say print line and then I need to surround my whole HTML line to fit within the method. Now notice it still looks like there's some errors. So another tweak I need to make is to make sure in this case that the whole thing is literal. So I'm going to surround it with double quotes. And there's still some problems. Note in the HTML, double quotes are also used within the parameters of the doctype tag. 
doesn't work so well in Java because Java recognizes that double quote as the end of the string and then everything after that it doesn't recognize anymore. One simple fix is to change the double quotes, which are part of the HTML, to single quotes so that they don't confuse Java. Now the thing is, I'm going to need to do that for all of the HTML code. So first I'm going to handle the easy stuff, the parts at the top of our view, which is pretty much going to be the same no matter what. As I'm doing this, I'm not going to talk very much, and I'll talk when it's mostly completed or something new comes up I need to mention. So next, I'd like to print out the message. So I'm going to set up right here, instead of what was on the index page, I'm going to include the message variable that we've set in our earlier processing. Since it's not a literal, I don't need the quotes, so I'm just going to include that here. The next part that we see still in HTML is only what you see if you need to make a guess. It's the correct things that need to be there, but we need to also wrap them in the out.print line. But this only needs to occur if the guess is incorrect. So let's do our if statement again. If those are equal, the guess is correct, else guess is incorrect. I need to go down here and enclose my if statement. Let's save the part for the guess correct till later, but let's go ahead and wrap up all of these things when it's an incorrect guess. First, the message about the range of the guess. Notice this is actually a mix of literal values and values from, from our game numbers. Since we're not in the JSP anymore and we're in Java, we need to do this a different way using concatenation. Please guess a number between this minimum number and that maximum number. Looks pretty good. Hopefully you're getting the idea as you watch this that dealing with the view component within a servlet is a bit of a pain. Hence that motivates us to deal with the view component in a different way, namely using a JSP. Okay, I'm glad that's over. So it looks like if the guess is incorrect, I have successfully set up the output to the client. Just a couple more things I need to do to complete this page and then we can test it. Let's make sure that the body and the HTML tags are properly outputted.
And then we need to deal with if the guess is correct. Remember, we've already printed out the message no matter what, so basically we just need to have a nice little hyperlink for play again. So once again, what have I done here in this servlet? For the do post, which is going to respond to a post request, the first thing that happens is I get the data. Recall that get parameters need to correspond to my input components of my form. And these all match either text boxes or hidden text boxes. So I get each one, I convert it to an int, and then I create a game number. Then I start to use those game numbers to make a comparison. Is this a correct guess? If so, I give a message of congratulations with how many guesses. Oh, one little error there, it's a game number, so I need to get the value. If the guess is incorrect, I increment guesses. I determine whether the guess is less than or greater than the target. If it's less than, we're going to say guess higher. If it's greater than, we're going to say guess lower. Then the hard part to do in the servlet is to generate the output. I create a print writer that I call out, and then I use that to output all of the HTML. Because it's Java, I have to use methods to print things out. And having the HTML inside the method as arguments looks pretty unnatural and messy. We'll see a better way when we learn MVC. I think we're all set to test the, our application. Let's right click on Guessing Game Servlet, choose Run As, pick the appropriate server, I'm using Tomcat, hit Finish. After a moment, we should see our guessing game. I'm going to cheat so I can do this in so many turns. Our hidden target is 105. 500, should say guess lower, guess number two. Let's try 250, should say guess lower with guess number three. Let's try 100, should say guess higher, guess number four. I think it was 105. Oh, I got it in four tries. One little thing I want to tweak is add some spaces in that message. So except for the spaces, everything looks good. For more information about the concepts that you learned in this video, please visit the references shown here. This video was written, narrated, and produced by Dr. Craig A. Piercy. Background music is locally sourced by Jason Farnham from the YouTube Audio Collection. This has been a Piercy production.